Hello, Math 7 students. This is Chapter 5, Inquiry Lab on Factoring Linear Expressions. Before we start in with the lesson, I want to do a brief review of what um, it means when we're finding the area of a rectangle. The area of a rectangle can be found by multiplying the length by the width. So I've got this beautiful rectangle here. I'm telling you that the length is 9 centimeters and the width is 6 centimeters. So what is the area? We would simply multiply the length and the width and we would get 6 times 9, 6 times 9, which is 54, 54 centimeters squared. But what happens if now I have a rectangle and this time I'm giving you the area, can we still use that information to find the dimensions, to find the length and the width? So I want you to pause the video now and take a second, see if you can figure out how you can figure out what the length and the width are when all we know is the area. Did you do it? need to be asking yourself when you're trying to answer this question is what are the two numbers that I can multiply together to get 55 so we're looking for factors and hopefully you came up with the width being 5 centimeters and the length being 11 centimeters you could have flip-flopped that and that's perfectly fine but the key thing to remember is how do I multiply two things to get 55 what would those two things need to be 5 times 11 is 55 um, now we're ready to uh, start in on page 411 from our inquiry lab um, and we go through that same sort of process. It says Max has enough one inch square glass tiles to create a rectangular piece of mosaic art that has an area of 24 square inches. Um, I'm sure you guys have seen those kinds of things where um, like there's a whole bunch of different tiles and each person paints like just one little tile but when they are all put all together, you can see this beautiful image. And so that's what he's doing here. He just has 24 separate tiles. So what are some different dimensions? What are some different lengths and widths that he could get using those 24 tiles? And so you can see these ones are already done for you. 24 times one, that will produce the area of 24. So that would just be a really small, thin rectangle that's just really, really, really long. Um, another possibility is three, and eight, so that would mean it would be three squares high by eight inches wide, three or eight squares wide, and all together that's gonna be 24 of those um, one inch square tiles. So what are the other possible dimensions? Again, pause the video now. All right, we're back. How did you do? Did you come up with these as your answers? The other possibilities, um, it could be a 12 by two rectangle, and a six by four rectangle. If you got these numbers flip-flopped, that's perfectly fine, it doesn't matter, um, just as long as you were able to find these factors. 12 times two multiply to give four, 24, and six times four multiplies to give 24 as well. So those are the other possibilities. That process is called factoring. Again, we know the product, we know that when we multiply it's gonna be 24, we're trying to figure out what those numbers are that would multiply to give me 24, and that's called factoring. Let's move on. Uh, we start with the hands-on activity where we have algebra tiles. Um, that's why in the lesson I included algebra tiles that you can print, color, and cut out, or you can just go back to our virtual online algebra tiles. Um, so what we're being asked to do, it says we need to use these algebra tiles to factor 2x plus 6. What that's saying is this 2x plus 6, that's our area. So we need to get out those tiles. You can see we've got our 2x plus 6 tiles here. If you're using this setup here, this is the Didax um, website. The first thing you want to do, this is an equation mat, and I don't want an equation mat. I actually want a corner frame. So I'm going to switch it to corner frame and click go, and then start pulling those tiles out. Um, if you're using the CPM, this is that CPM one, and what you would do is change your background to be corner piece. And then once it's corner piece, go ahead and hide that background tab click on the algebra tiles and you can start getting your algebra tiles out there. Um, I'm going to switch back over to the didax and I have my two x tiles and my six unit tiles um, ready to go. Step two says arrange the tiles into a rectangle that has equal rows and equal columns. So look at how they've arranged it here. Let's go ahead and do the same thing. As I'm arranging it, I'm just going to kind of line them up here in the corner. And as I line them all up to create this rectangle shape, notice that it is a perfect rectangle, right? I don't have any, if I left it like this, that would not be a rectangle, but now you can see that we have a length and a width. Um, so how long is this rectangle? 
I'm going to pull up one more so I can see exactly how long it is. That Remember, that's x long. And then we've got one, two, three of those. So this is x and three tiles long. But how wide is it? I want you to be careful here. I know that we're seeing this x tile, but when you look at how tall it actually is, it's really just a unit tile and another unit tile. Okay, so we built our rectangle. Now we're just looking at the dimensions. And what are those dimensions? Back to our book, we can see that it's 2 by x plus 3, which means the dimensions of this rectangle are 2x, or excuse me, 2x plus 6 is 2, that's our width, and x plus 3, that's our length. Um, so where's all that coming from? Look at that. This is x plus 3 long, so that's x plus 3 and two tall, so the two. So this is how we factor. Those are the factors of the expression 2x plus 6. Let's look at another example. Uh, we have 2x minus 8, so I'm going to go ahead and get my didax algebra tiles ready. Remember, this problem said 2x minus 8, so my first step would be to think of that as 2x plus a negative 8, and I would represent that 2x and the negative 8 with those negative unit tiles there, and I've got eight of them. Step two, just like it said before, step two is arrange them into a rectangle with equal rows and equal columns. You can see exactly how it's supposed to be arranged. The next one is not going to be arranged for you, so you will have to figure out what that's going to look like, look like, but kind of follow the same ideas. Notice that this rectangle has no gaps in it. The only reason why I'm including these little tiny gaps are just to try and keep things neat and tidy, but it's not like um, I'm leaving big spaces like that, right? Everything is all squished in there together. Um, some things that are going to help you as you're building these rectangles, keep all of your unit tiles together and keep all of your um, x tiles together. That'll help you be really successful in building these rectangles. So again, let's take a look and see what are the dimensions. This was not just x long. It had extra tiles there. How many of them? One, two, three, four. So the length is going to be x and not plus four because those are all negative. So x minus four. Um, how long or excuse me, how tall are they? We need to look at the height now. I'm going to use these yellow ones here to represent the height. And the reason I'm using the yellow ones, you'll, you'll, it'll be clear in just a second. So let's take a look at those dimensions then. We can see two high and x minus four. Look at how we consider that that's too high. We can't really measure that negatively, and so that's why I counted it as just positive. So 2x minus 8, what is that? What is that factored? What are those dimensions? See if you can pause the video and figure that out first before I show you the answer. All right, take a look. The dimensions of that rectangle are 2 and x minus 4, so factored it's 2 times x minus 4. Notice those parentheses. It's not just 2 times x. It's 2 times x minus 4. It's that whole side length. So that's why we need to include it in parentheses. All right, the next one is going to be up to you. Um, I will show you in just a second, but I want you to pause the video and I want you to give this one a try on your own. Pause the video now. Hopefully you're finished at this point. Uh, what this should look like, now you should be drawing this in this mat area here, but you first want to represent it with your own algebra tiles. Um, I have my 1, 2, 3 x's and my 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 negative unit tiles. I arrange them into this rectangle and then I use these tiles up here on the sides um, to figure out what those dimensions are. So this is x and negative 2, so it would be x minus 2, and it's 3 tall. So we end up with, see here they are drawn out, here they are rearranged in that rectangle, and so the dimensions are 3 and x minus 2, so it's factored to be 3 times in parentheses, x minus 2. All right, these ones are also um, done for you, or they're not done for you, you need to work on them. The ones that I'm going to go over, so the ones that I want you to focus on first, I'm going to go over 1 and 3. Um, so pause the video and just work on 1 and 3, and we'll go over those in just a second. Back to number one, 4x plus 6. There's the 4x tiles. Here's the 6 unit tiles. When you try and um, arrange this in a rectangle like the other ones have done, um, sure, we can keep all of our green ones here together, and we can start trying to keep these yellow ones together and forming this rectangle, but you're going to notice that 
we can't really form a perfect rectangle because we've got those two extra ones um, keeping it from being a rectangle or if I do line them up we've got two missing here so we've got to look at this a little bit different and so what you really needed to do is we're still keeping these green X tiles together but they don't all have to stay in a single line in a single row we can move them over kind of like that there um, and so now when I do this I can form a perfect rectangle it's just going to be a really short but very long skinny rectangle and now I was able to form that rectangle which makes our dimensions two by not just one but two x plus three so we can see it here two times two x plus three we've got our rectangle formed we can see that it's one and two x that's where that comes from plus one, two, three of those extras. That's how long it is, right? And then how tall is it? It's just one and one tall. Again, don't be confused. I know it looks like it's an X tile, but remember that those X tiles, this side length is one here, okay? So factored form would be two times parentheses, two X plus three. Let's take a look at number three. Going back to number three, three X plus 12, I've got it modeled here. Three X tiles, 12 unit tiles formed into this rectangle. How big are the dimensions? That's X and one, two, three, four. I'm not gonna put all of them out there, one, two, three, four. And how tall is it? That's one, two, three units tall. So taking a look at our answer here, three tall, X plus four wide. So it's three times parentheses X plus four. The next ones that I'm going to go over here are five and six. Pause the video now and see if you can do those ones. The only difference here is that we're gonna have some of those red negative unit tiles, um, but it's basically the same idea. So pause the video now and give it a try on your own. All right, let, so let's take a look. Three X minus nine. Here's my three X tiles, my negative nine tiles. I can see that I can form a rectangle that's X minus three by three. So that gives me this beautiful rectangle here, and we would write it as three times the quantity X minus three. Looking at the next one, I switched over to the CPM so you could see that one. Just remember if you're trying to rotate these tiles here, it's a double click to get it to rotate. And if you're trying to turn them into negatives, you just single click those, okay? Uh, so here I've got my two X minus four, and how long are they? Well, that's X and negative two long, so X minus two, and it's two tall, which gives me two times X minus two. Two by X minus two, multiply those together, and that's how I got the two X minus four. Uh, the rest of those ones are gonna be done on your own for practice problems. I'm down to just a couple minutes, so I wanna quickly go over the rest of this. Um, when you turn the page, you've got this table that you need to fill out. I'm hoping that you're starting to see kind of some connections here. Um, we want to make connections between factoring and the distributive property, and this table is helping us make those connections. So take a look and see what we have here. We have 2x plus 8. That's the original expression. Um, use algebra tiles if you need to to factor it. Obviously, this one's already done for you, but when you're doing the rest of these, you'll probably want to get those algebra tiles out and use them. Factored, it's going to be 2 times the quantity x plus 4. What is the distributive property then? Well, I would take this two and multiply it by X and get two X. I would take this two and also multiply it by the four. See, so two plus four, don't forget that plus sign there. And that two plus four is equal to the eight. So make those connections then. When I actually distribute it, what do I end up with? 2x plus 8. Huh, that was the original expression. So I want you to go through this table and make some of those connections. Uh, pause the video now to make it through the rest of that table, and we'll come back very briefly before I end the video. Okay, we're back. Uh, take a look at number 9. Number 9, 4x minus 8. When I factor that, I have 4 times x minus 2, and um, we can see when we redistribute that, that we end up with that original expression again. Um, the rest of it is up to you for your practice problems. How are they related? Well, factoring and distribution are just inverse processes. Um, factoring is backwards distribution. So if you know how to distribute, we're trying to undistribute or factor. Uh, that's it. Your practice problems are pages 413 through 414. Those are the exact same pages that we were just working on. I just want you to finish any of those problems that we didn't do together in the video. So problems 1 through 16, anything that we didn't finish. That's it, guys. Have a great day. We'll see you next time.